Here's Mark. Get Mark. Mark. So you weren't on the stupid show last night. Why? What were you doing that was more important? I was actually having a cigarette outside with President Nasheed, as it happened. You don't first smoke? Cigarette, first, no, I know. It was just an excuse to go outside and have a, have a quiet chat. <laughs> Did you smoke but, the cigarette? Yeah. It gave me a huge head rush and I almost fell over. <laughs> but as well as that, <clears> what <throat> were you doing last night? Um, I was in the um, Heads of State negotiating session up there in the, the what's, what was then restricted sex. Section. Meaning Heads of State, meaning um, 25 Heads of State were appointed by the President of the COP yeah. here to thrash out a deal. To which have a special, special little side uh, meeting. Well, yeah, and yeah. Uh, these, these weren't just the rich and powerful countries, these were all sorts of countries meant to represent different, um, different groups of the world. And what the hell were you doing there? You're not a head of state yet. No, but I'm advisor to one. Right. So that, that was, um, I mean, I, I wasn't in the room the whole time because they were quite strict about it. It just got packed, overcrowded yeah. and completely chaotic. So give us a picture. How big was the room? How many people? And who was there? Mention one name in particular. Angela Merkel? <laughs> yes. Uh, no, uh, uh, President Obama was there for a fair amount of time, wow. actually, um, sitting just on the corner in between uh, Meles from Ethiopia and uh, from uh, Gordon Brown, if I remember rightly. And, um, <laughs> you can't remember whether Gordon Brown was there. No. Your own he, Prime Minister. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, and, and Obama was making sort of textual changes, saying, well, how, how about if we move this, what's in this bracket? No. This stuff about forest, we put it up a line, you know, does that make it any better? No I mean, way. He's a lawyer, he's good at that stuff. <laughs> so how mad was that? How mad was it? Yeah, for you. You came here to present the stupid show and you've ended up being in the room as Obama changes the text. Yeah, well, yeah, which is, you know, which was, which was fun. But, I mean, it's put me in the position of, of not being able to sort of give a frank analysis of the conference because uh, yeah. <laughs> That's I'm sort of bound nice by... Right. Well, I mean, I'm bound by the sort of... There's a certain ethical principle. If they wanted press in the room, they'd have asked for press in the room, yeah. and there's a reason why they don't. So you have to, you have to be quite circumspect about, um, about what you say. But um, you've been following climate change for I don't know however many years now, and you found yourself literally in the moment when they're writing the Copenhagen Agreement and Obama's changing the text. Yes, well, I wish it was more comforting. Right. I mean, it's shown me, I suppose, the limitations, really. Uh, I mean, also, also, we were just so close to something amazing last night, and it oh, didn't really? happen. Oh, what, really? So what, would have, what could have been in that would have made it amazing? Yeah, all sorts of other numbers. You know, we could have had 80% by 2050. Everyone else could have lived with that. 80% by 2050. Yeah. Everybody else except one particular country. Tony, you're next. Um, everybody else except one particular <laughs> okay. country that took it out, you mean? Um, well, I mean, let's say if the room had had a different composition, yeah. <laughs> then we'd have had a very different yeah. type of agreement. I mean, to some, I think there's a case actually for having a sort of coalition of the willing where, yeah. where countries who really do want, who are serious about this, get together and... Um, and get serious about mitigation, but and, and that that group of the willing would include the US at this yeah, point yeah, and yeah. Australia. I mean, Australia was playing an ex incredibly positive role. It's, wow. For the, for someone who's been involved in watching these negotiations for a long time, it's it's kind of yeah. a complete turnaround. So, just to go back to basics for a second, because it's very hard to tell. All the reports and everything are all saying completely different things. Do we have a deal? Um, we have something called the Copenhagen Accord, which is noted by right. the Conference of Parties, which is the legal sort of mechanism here. Um, the extent to which the provisions in the Copenhagen Accord therefore have to actually take place is open to question. So we kind of do. And how's because we were thinking we were going to have the Copenhagen Agreement or the Copenhagen Protocol. Now we've got the Copenhagen Accord. What does that mean? Uh, it means that when the conference of parties was presented with this and asked to adopt it, various countries objected. Ah, so we've we've got and an accord that be... isn't signed up. How many countries have signed up? Um, we don't know yet, but there was certainly five or six countries who objected on, in the plenary, and, and, and the process has to be done through consensus, so any country can block it. Okay, so five or six countries objected, it has to be consensus, doesn't that therefore mean we haven't got a deal? Sorry for being um, so incredibly it, thick. No, 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 it means we don't have, we don't have a, 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 an adopted deal in the COP, yes, no, we don't have that at all. That's why, that's why the COP is only taking note of this accord, ah. and the countries who wish to can sign up to it. I see. And when are we going to find, up, find out who signs up and who doesn't? Uh, I'm not sure what the timeline is, but I mean, I can is tell you some of the countries of that won't sign up. Go on, please. Um, Ecuador. Yeah. Um, it's basically the, the communist bloc in Latin America, <laughs> yeah. if you like. Tuvalu. Um, uh, Tuvalu is, is iffy. Yeah. Um, but I Venezuela. think they probably will. Venezuela yeah. won't, uh, Bolivia won't, yeah. Ecuador won't, Cuba won't. But, so that means the big US, Australia? Of course. Yeah, no, China, no, India, yeah, yeah, yeah. India? Yeah, they, okay. they could not sign up to it because they were in the heads of, heads of state meeting. Right, right. So, so basically 25. the heads of state meeting where you were in with the 25 made the agreement. Yeah. And then they took that to everybody. And then what happened when they took it to everybody yeah. at the big plenary? Well, that was about four o'clock this morning. Yeah, and then when, when that happened at four o'clock this morning, there were lots of objections from the 
people who hadn't been in the room. Yeah, but of definitely. course, the, con- the room was constructed in such a way that it was meant to represent all the different regions. So there was, you know, there was um, uh, Lesotho was in the room. That's hardly a big country. Maldives yeah. was there, of course. Yeah. Um, Grenada was there, also representing small island states. So they, they, I think the, in- the different interest groups in the world were fairly represented. Um, I, I think it was probably more of a... Uh, I mean, they, it was a, just a, uh, an excuse to stuff it to the Yankees, basically. <laughs> I mean, and, and again, it played into that. The problem was that... The, the, the we, we'd come out with such a weak deal yeah. that then the some the developing countries could say, oh, it's too weak for us to sign up to. Right. But of course, they were the ones who insisted it was weak to start <laughs> with, or some of them. I mean, the, the games are played behind proxies, if you like. So yeah. China doesn't ever make those kinds of moves in an open plenary. It uses other countries yeah. for it. And what happened in those four hours? Well, that's sort of confidential, right. but um, it was very hard fought. And, um, you know, we came out with a pretty shitty deal, actually, in my opinion. I mean... Because we've just interviewed Nasheed, President yeah. Nasheed, one minute ago. He's absolutely delighted, he's grinning from ear to ear, and he says that 1.5 degrees is in. Is this yeah. true? Well, um, it's in, in very weak language at the end, right. um, saying that there will be a review process um, in 2015, I can't even remember the yeah, exact year, like, yeah. um, with, with the view to taking some reference to the possibility that 1.5 might be desirable. I'm not quoting okay, the exact language. So there's absolutely language, no the, way we're going to... If we no, leave it to 20, uh, 2015 to even start thinking about it, there's no way we're going to uh, stay at 1.5. Um, yeah, that's true. Right. We have to peak now. Okay. But, I mean, um, to be, you know, it, there was, there's no possibility, given where some of the countries were, um, that we'll get anything like that at this stage in the game. To be honest, I mean, even... Um, they, they were objecting to any reference to even any kind of stabilisation target. No PPM figure, it didn't yeah. matter what it was. Is no 3 in now? No. No, of right. course not. Oh, God, no, that just right. a bit a week ago. Right. But no reference even to peaking, in, even no reference even to 50% cuts by 2050, which yeah. is, which is that was you know, that's G8 policy. Yeah. And we couldn't even get in that. This is worse than a G8 communique. Wow. I mean, President Nasheed is, 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 is optimistic because he sees this as the start of a longer process. He's not giving up, yeah. you know, and um, I think that's probably the right thing to do. You can't give up until you're... You know, until you're six feet under, <laughs> under the waves. Um, so has anybody crunched the numbers? Does anybody know what uh, what degree temperature rise the deal as it stands now, or the deal that is, would commit us to? Um, the numbers I've seen uh, take bring us in at about three point something. Right. So, so pretty about, much no about deal. Two or three uh, uh, tenths of a degree below <laughs> business as usual. Below no deal at all. Yeah. Well, I mean. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not. It's not good. I mean, it depends on what the numbers are because, you know, the EU, for example, has this conditional twenty percent or thirty yeah. percent. Um, they they probably won't go up to thirty percent. This was one of the key the things that everybody was really trying to get the EU to move to thirty yeah, percent. We really thought they, this was going to happen, didn't we? Yeah, this is they, a real failure. But they needed other people to move. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And the Chinese didn't give an inch. The yeah. Indians didn't give an inch. And to be honest, I mean, it's the. I've never seen the rich countries come to a COP and so desperately want to get a really? strong outcome. And, and no one actually understands that this is the dynamic now. The, people are, the NGOs in particular, environmental groups, yeah. are all stuck in this old wow. idea that the rich countries aren't willing to give any... Right. I mean, to, the rich countries were desperate for a deal. They conceded everything. And, and, and they still lost. So I mean, the blocking countries were which ones? Well, you, may, you can... They're, 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 I mean, it's been said in the plenary. Yeah. The developing country, high emitting yeah. yeah. developing countries. You put the two things together yeah. and you come out with just two names. Yeah, yeah. So we heard a rumour that Ed Miliband made a couple of really good moves late last night and tried to save things. Do you know any detail of that? Um, there was one point where the um, the president of the COP, so the chairperson... We who's, actually who's lost the, two presidents during the night, right? Two resigned. Yeah, well, uh, the Danish <laughs> prime minister was president of the COP at the time and, you know, he'd... he'd he resigned. He was... Um, well, I suppose he resigned. Yeah, Someone he did, else yeah. turned up in the yeah. chair. Yeah. Right. But and he, then another one, apparently. Well, but but he he was basically he said, well, there's no consensus, and he was just about to say, well, in that case, we don't. And and Ed Miliband stuck his hand up no. and said, I move for uh, an adjournment. So good move, Ed. Yeah, well, I mean, if, if he hadn't done that, probably it would have, the 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 Danish PM passed. was just about to throw it away. Wow, that's major, isn't it? Yeah. What time was that? I have no idea. Sometime. It was, well, early it in was the after four. It was. It was probably about, about seven. Six. No, seven. six or seven. Yeah, it was quite wow. late. Wow. Wow. So Miliband saved what the day. Time is it now? He's being surprisingly modest when we just spoke to him. Then. Um, no, it was. It was a good move. But um, the fact is that the that the US, the EU, um, the Australians, even they've done their damnedest to get a deal, and they've actually been outmaneuvered. Yeah. Uh, so they've um, by the Chinese, know, I think. Yeah, primarily. I mean, I wouldn't want to mention any names, yeah. but yes. <laughs> and what the hell happened to the targets? The EU target? That's not in there anymore. Nobody's targets are in there, well, right? Where have they gone? 
Uh, no, there are no targets in there. They're, all there is is this below two degrees figure, yeah. which doesn't. We forgot actually to say we should have. I should have had remembered at the time. I would have asked the president to put this in. <laughs> um, we should have put below pre-industrial, above pre-industrial. Yeah. So of course there's no baseline for that, yeah. which was a mistake. 2050 baseline, I think. Well, okay. <laughs> 2050 yeah. baseline. Yeah. So that probably adds up to four degrees. Yeah. What's um, your take, Tony? Um, I'm just so depressed. I'm absolutely appalled. I, 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 I cannot believe it. It just descended into such a farce and then a catastrophe last night. And the fact that they're still now talking in the plenary about the status of this document, there's no clarity about whether you know it's going to be signed off by the whole meeting or whether it's just a few countries. I, it, uh, yeah, I, I suppose in some ways my worst case scenario for this was that some governments would come away with a piece of paper that they would say we've got something, and it looks like you know that has happened when that something is going to do very little, if anything, to get us out of this appalling mess we've got ourselves into. After all the hype as well, I mean, mm. after all the hype what too. a letdown. You know, it's been two years of hype, hasn't it, yeah. about Copenhagen being the end yeah. of this great process. And, yeah. and it's actually the, probably the worst agreement I've seen for 10 years. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like a G8 declaration, you know, lots of blather and even yeah. worse than G8 declaration because we're not even sure who's signing up to it. No, exactly. And it's possibly even worse than that because, um, you know, it's, it, 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 it's taking us backwards rather than forwards. Imagine if the UK could cut 10% in a year, come back here in a year and go, we've started. It'd be great, wouldn't it? It would be absolutely wonderful. And I, I think that's probably one of the things for, for next year is, is to be campaigning in that space, which is, you know, more in a kind of uh, cultural... Yeah, let's just personal. do it. Let's just do it. Exactly. I, mean, I was just, just going to say the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's forget the campaigning and let's just start doing it, don't yeah, you think? Campaigning. Um, but it's different to this campaigning. Yeah, but I mean, rather than campaigning for political pressure, I think... Yeah. Um, I think just start making the cuts. Well, I, I, I've always maintained that there's, there's a fine line between, on the one hand, campaigning for, for political pressure to be applied, and on the other, campaigning for behaviour change. I think the two yeah. are kind of hand in hand, and I think probably, you know, the way that this has gone, the pendulum has swung back more to the other side, because, you know, you get political change out of people changing their behaviour. But then, on the other hand, we can get political change in the UK, it seems. Like you were saying, Ed is pretty much online with all of our kind of thinking. It's not the UK in the way that's holding us back. No, indeed, no, exactly. But it's not a good moment, that's for certain, considering, you know, the, the, the two years that was allocated to this and the amount of time and effort and money and energy that's been expended on this. I think quite a lot of people are going to feel fairly disillusioned with, with trying to get change through these kinds of processes. How would you summarise in one word then? I mean, from, say, complete triumph to total fucking disaster, what was it? Um, a catastrophe, I think, was, was the word I was thinking this morning as I was trundling down on the metro here. But is it better than no deal? I think it's worse than no deal because the world will be confused by this. And, you know, the, the, just reading some of the headlines this morning in Time magazine and places, you know, The Guardian will report it as we might see it, but most news outlets, you know, you speak to the journalists in there, a lot of them don't really know what's going on, even though they've been sitting here for a fortnight. And they'll report this as, like, you know, something came out of Copenhagen, there's a two degree target, countries are going to cooperate, some money is announced maybe at some point. And, you know, it gives the impression that progress was made. And that's exactly what the politics was going on last night. And, you know, it's no mistake that before anybody saw this particular document, the White House website had it, had it up there as um, a meaningful deal. And, you know, yeah. that meaningful deal is in the headlines. You know, they, they were spinning this for their own political domestic purposes before anybody else had even seen the document. So that's what it was all about last night. It was about face saving. It was about pandering to the domestic gallery. And it really wasn't about trying to solve this problem which remains, you know, without any, I can't see any, any resolution in, in the next few years as a result of this. And actually, you know, the other thing, don't underestimate the damage this has done in terms of, you know, the willingness of campaigners and activists to engage with this kind of process, having seen what happened here. And also, you know, the way in which various um, naysayers will take this as proof that international solutions won't work for a problem like this. Um, so let's just summarise. So you remember our Copenhagen sprint? with the, uh, the suicide pact, the coin flip, or the good chance. Uh, this new Copenhagen Accord, which people may or may not sign up to, which one of those is that? Um, between coin flip and suicide. And there we have it. <laughs>